audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Believers aren't perfect, but we know that the Lord forgives. Coming up today, Pastor Greg Laurie helps us help others. What do we do when we see someone who is godly falling into sin? Should we take a perverse delight in it? Should we make sure we tell as many people as possible about it? Well, that's not what the Bible says. It says the opposite. Be humble about this because that could have happened to you. And our objective is never to destroy. Our objective is always to restore. This is the day when the lost are found. Bad news can travel halfway around the world while good news is still putting its shoes on. When an influential believer falls into sin, it seems like we hear about it at the speed of light. But how do we reach out to someone who's helped us when they're the ones who need help? Pastor Greg Laurie answers that question today on A New Beginning. We're considering a story about Noah in the book of Genesis. The godly man sinned. But we can learn from this biblical account. talking a little bit about Noah last time and how evil things were and how Noah managed to work for God. He worked for God. He said, I want you to effectively build a giant boat. And one of the greatest practical acts of faith in all of history, Noah cut down that first gopher wood tree to build this ark. I mean, this man followed the will of God and he sat on this boat for all of this time and he waited on the Lord. And then when they finally reached dry land, Noah built an altar to the Lord. I mean, hey, if you'd been cooped up in a boat for that long, wouldn't you wanna just run around for a while? Noah said, no, I'm I'm gonna bring a sacrifice to God. I'm gonna remember that God did all of this for us. And now we read of some things that Noah did that kind of shock us. But actually, this shouldn't shock us at all. We see Noah messing up big time in Genesis chapter nine. Let's read about it. Verse 20. After the flood, Noah began to cultivate the ground and he planted a vineyard. One day he drank some wine that he had made and he became drunk and lay naked inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers. Then Shem and Japheth took a robe and held it over their shoulders and backed into the tent to cover their father. As they did this, they looked the other way so they would not see him naked. When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned what Ham, the youngest son, had done. Then he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. May Canaan be cursed. May he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. Then Noah said, may the Lord God of Shem be blessed and may Canaan be a servant. May God expand the territory of Japheth. And now may Japheth share the prosperity of Shem and may Canaan be his servant. Noah lived another 350 years after the great flood. He lived 950 years and then he died. Wow, okay, what? (laughs) Why did this happen? Because the Bible's an honest book. And if one of our heroes messes up, we're gonna read about it. And we're gonna learn from it. Just like we learned from their positive example, we'll learn from their negative example of things to not do. First point I would bring up though, the fall of Noah shows that anyone can fall into sin. Anyone can fall into sin. No one is above or beyond temptation. It's ironic because when Noah is introduced to us in Genesis 6, 9, it says he was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time and he walked with God. Then of course, we're told he was a preacher of righteousness. There are a few characters in the Bible with credentials like this. He's a genuine hero of the faith, slipping. But let me say something that might surprise you, but I want you to think about this. You might be surprised to know that sometimes those who have known the Lord longer can be more vulnerable to slipping than the person who is younger in the faith. Sometimes those who have known the Lord longer can be more vulnerable to slipping, falling, and those who are young in the faith. Take a small child. 
A small child knows they need their parent. They call out to their mommy or their daddy for everything. They can't even feed themselves yet. They're dependent upon their parent. But as they get older, they become more independent. When they become teenagers, they don't even want to see you anymore, right? But that's the whole point, isn't it? We're raising them to stand on their own two feet and think for themselves. And as we grow in our faith, initially we're so dependent on God. But after a few years have gone by, now a decade has passed, now two decades, now three decades. You've acquired a little bit of Bible knowledge, haven't you? You've worn out a few Bibles. You know a few things. In fact, you think you probably know more than you actually know. Now you're a sermon connoisseur. You know, I like this one guy's messaging, but I don't like the other and I disagree with him. So you're an expert on everything. And here's the problem. You start lowering your guard a little bit and you think, I know all these things and I've grown so much. Okay, that's great, but wait, be on guard because you might find yourself falling into some kind of sin. Pride goes before a fall. That's what the Bible says. Simon Peter made the mistake of boasting in the presence of the other disciples, though all deny you, I will never deny you. Jesus said, before the rooster has crowed twice, you will deny me thrice, basically. And that's exactly what happened. Consider this. Noah's not the only one who messed up later in life. Moses did too. Here's Moses, the great lawgiver. Moses, who delivered the Israelites from the bondage of Pharaoh and went to the wilderness with them. He comes to the very brink of the promised land and he's unable to enter in because he sinned against God. And the Lord did not let him enter into the land. David too, the great king of Israel, sinned later in life. When he should have been leading his troops into battle, he was idle, he's in his 50s, he's kicking back, and he's thinking he's above it all and he falls into sin. And David's own son, Solomon, also fell into gross sin in his later years. Solomon was blessed with supernatural wisdom that was so great, people came from around the world to sit at his feet and learn. But then Solomon went on a sinful binge, sampling everything this world has to offer. So think of these great men of God who messed up later in life. Thanks for joining us for A New Beginning with Pastor Greg Laurie, Senior Pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California. Today we're considering Noah's failure in Genesis chapter 9. Pastor Greg is presenting his message called God Keeps His Promises. Let's continue. Noah had done the big work already. You know, he, he's built the ark, he's landed the ark, he's accomplished the purpose now he's thinking, oh, I don't know, I've worked awfully hard. I think I'll just plant a vineyard and enjoy the fruit of my labor. And, uh, and you know what happens here in this story. And this also brings up the destructive power of alcohol. Look at verse 21. He became drunk and lay naked. Do I have to tell you it's a sin to get drunk? This comes as a revelation to some people. The Bible tells us to not be drunk with wine. And I know about the destructive power of alcohol. The first 17 years of my life, I lived in an alcoholic home. My mom didn't just drink. She was a raging alcoholic, screaming and yelling every night, throwing things, passing out, sometimes not coming home at all. And to my mother, who was a beautiful woman, uh, at the age of 70, looked like she was 90 or beyond because the effects of her drinking had taken its toll on her, including a head-on collision that she had while driving drunk one night. It was so sad what drinking did to her life, and I saw the ruined relationships and all the rest of it, and I've seen to this day how alcohol destroys people, and uh, even Christians, and sometimes even people in leadership. So this is something we need to be so careful of. Think of how many lives have been destroyed through it. I love how quiet it gets when I address this subject. <laughs> but Noah's life stands as a warning to every person who follows Jesus because nothing is recorded about him 
after his fall. It's like the next 300 years of his life are a blank. You don't want that to happen. It's good to run a race well, but it's also very important to finish a race. If you're holding the first place position in a race of 10 laps for the first nine laps, and you collapse and fall in the 10th lap, it's all for nothing. And so here is a man at the end of his life messing up. Thank God there's still restoration even when we fail. But we want to be so careful because look at what his son Ham does. He sees his father in this compromised state. And by the way, the Bible suggests he, he deliberately put himself in that state. Not just that he was drunk, but scholars uh, tell us the Hebrew word for uncovered indicates a deliberate act, not a mere unconscious effort of drunkenness. So he was intentionally living in, in a bad way here. And, and he should have never done this, but okay, he had done it, all right? So his son Ham sees him and thinks, oh, this, I'm gonna tell everyone how badly my father messed up. And what a shame that was. The other brothers did not react that way. What do we do when we see someone who is godly falling into sin? Should we take a perverse delight in it? Should we make sure we tell as many people as possible about it? By the way some people behave, you would think the Bible says if a brother or a sister is overtaken in sin, you who are spiritual should kick them when they're down and tell as many people as possible. Well, that's not what the Bible says. It says the opposite. If a brother or a sister is overtaken in sin, we're told in Scripture, you who are spiritual should seek to restore them in a spirit of weakness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. In other words, be humble about this because it could be you. That could have happened to you. And our objective is never to destroy. Our objective is always to restore. I know it's hard. Because when you confront someone who's in sin, well, let's go back to drinking again since you love that subject so much. Um, <laughs> and so... They're drinking, and you're seeing it's ruining their life. You're seeing they're making horrible decisions. Man, you gotta stop doing that. What are you doing? Why are you living that way? Hey, man, don't judge my journey, they say. Or they say something more like, you yeah, don't judge my journey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. You gotta change your course. I love you. I'm saying this because I care about you. See, that, my objective is to help them, to get them back on their feet again. Because I'm told in James 5, 19, if anyone should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So, Noah was effectively a last day's believer. He was waiting for the judgment of God to come through a flood. We too are last day's believers. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be when the Son of Man comes back again. And what did he tell us after that? He said, so two men will be working in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two will be in a bed. One will be taken, and the other left. Then he concludes, so stay awake. You don't know when your master will show up. So let me ask you this in closing. If Christ were to come back today or tonight, would you be one of the ones who would be caught up to meet him in the air or would you be one of the ones who would be left behind? You don't want to be. Because then a great tribulation period is coming. It's going to be a horrible time. You want to be ready for the Lord's return. Or maybe I'm talking to somebody right now who like Noah, you've fallen. You're like that lady in that commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> you need someone to help you. And God will help you. He'll pull you up and he'll forgive you. Not condemn you. He died for your sin. And he loves you. Even when you fail, even when you fall short, he'll give you a second chance, but you must call out to him. And as we close our message today, I want to extend an invitation for any of you to believe in Jesus Christ, to be forgiven of your sin, and know with certainty that you'll go to heaven when you die. And know with certainty that you'll be ready for the Lord's return. And if you've fallen, to be restored and get back up on your feet spiritually. If you need to make a commitment to Christ, a recommitment to him, why don't you do it right here, right now? Let's all pray. Father, thank you for your word to us. 
And I pray that you will speak to every heart here, everyone watching and listening, wherever they are. They're loved by you with an everlasting love. And you want to bring them into relationship with yourself. Help them to respond now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor Greg Laurie closing with an important prayer for those wanting to make a change in their relationship with the Lord. And if you'd like to make that sort of change, Pastor Greg has some more thoughts to share. Maybe as you've been listening to this message, you've thought, I wish I could come into this relationship with God. I just don't know how. Let me tell you how you can come into a relationship with God right here, right now. First of all, you need to recognize you need God. You need to admit you're a sinner. I know some people choke on that word, but the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But then you need to recognize that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross for your sin. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then you need to believe in Jesus. Jesus put it this way, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You might ask, how does one believe in Jesus? To believe means to put your faith and trust in Christ, in Christ alone, and to receive him into your life as your own friend, Savior, and Lord. The Bible says, For as many as received him, He gave them the power to become sons of God. Would you like to receive Christ? And by that I mean, would you like to ask Jesus to enter into your life and be your Savior, your friend, your Lord? If so, you can just pray this prayer after me. It's a simple prayer. You can pray it out loud if you would like, or you can pray it in the quietness of your heart. But if you want Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin. If you want to go to heaven when you die, or maybe you want to make a recommitment to the Lord, just pray this prayer after me now. Pray these words if you would. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you're the Savior who died on the cross for my sin. I turn now from my sin, and I ask you to come into my life and forgive me of all of my sin. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for hearing this prayer. And thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, I want to congratulate you and say, welcome to the family of God. Yeah, that's right. And we want to help you get started as you live for the Lord. Let us send you a new Believer's Growth Pack. It's a collection of resources that'll help answer many of the questions that you might have and give you a solid start in this new life with God. Just call and ask for a new Believer's Growth Pack on 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. And the team would love to pray with you too. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Next time on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg brings a powerful step-by-step study on how to follow the Lord's plans for a more successful and rewarding prayer life. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called God Keeps His Promises. If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.